the steady trickle of information about the strange case of attacks on U.S. diplomats in Cuba through alleged sonic devices continues. On Thursday, the Associated Press released what it claims are recordings of the sounds that diplomats heard before experiencing mild brain damage and hearing loss. And you can listen to them according to multiple reports from the AP and some reluctant statements from the U.S. State Department. Diplomats stationed in Havana were repeatedly attacked by an advanced sonic weapon that operated outside the range of audible sound in various locations including inside their homes and at a hotel. The exact details of the situation have continually shifted as more victims have been revealed and a variety of circumstances and symptoms have been reported. The audio recordings released today constitute the most solid public evidence from the incidents yet. The AP reports that these recordings were what led investigators from the U.S. to suspect that a sophisticated sonic weapon or sonic wave machine was being used against the diplomats by a malicious party that still has not been publicly identified. From the report the recordings from Havana have been sent for analysis to the U.S. Navy, which has advanced capabilities for analyzing acoustic signals, and to the intelligence services, the AP has learned. But the recordings have not significantly advanced U.S. knowledge about what is harming diplomats. Officials say the government still doesn't know what is responsible for injuries to its personnel, but the U.S. has faulted Cuba for failing to protect American diplomats on its soil. Not all of the victims of which the State Department has acknowledged at least 22 complained about hearing the sounds. Those who did hear something described a deafeningly loud sound similar to the buzzing created by insects or metal scraping, that seemed to be isolated to specific areas of the room. When the AP played recordings of the sound back to some of the victims, they confirmed that it was the sound they heard. So far, there's been no definitive proof that the sound was connected to whatever caused the symptoms experienced by the diplomats and those symptoms have varied from victim to victim, covering a wide range of maladies, including hearing loss, dizziness, tinnitus, balance problems, visual difficulties, headaches, fatigue, cognitive issues and sleeping difficulties. Played through standard speakers or headphones, the audio should be no more dangerous than any other recording. Even if those frequencies were present, experts have cast doubt that ultrasound high frequency or infrasound low frequency could be reasonably weaponized in a way that would be consistent with what the State Department has said about the victims. The physics don't add up, one official with knowledge of the situation told the AP. One theory for the attacks has been that microwaves or radio waves were used in the attacks, and there has been some precedent for that kind of tactic, but it wouldn't produce a sound. Still, the sound could just be a form of psychological warfare. None of this has a reasonable explanation, Fulton Armstrong, a former CIA official said in September. It's just mystery after mystery after mystery. What is certain is that the situation is rapidly deteriorating the fragile new relationship between Cuba and the U.S. Despite Cuba's repeated denials that it has had nothing to do with these incidents and no knowledge of who is responsible, the U.S. has dramatically cut its staff in Havana, asked Cuban officials to leave Washington, D.C., and warned American travelers that it might not be safe for them to visit Cuba. Associated Press More Technology Posts